Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are very fortunate here today to have uh, another guided meditation section on the topic freedom, led by our teacher, Mr. Ken Sinorbo, who's also known as John Sakesi Hipoche. Now let us welcome our teacher, Mr. Norbu. Over to you. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, those who live in Auckland, starting from there, I will wish everyone Happy New Year. <clears throat> Um, due to all kinds of um, in, um, engagement, I couldn't continue the Diana till now. Hopefully, you know. uh, we can come to this platform. Mm, more frequently. <clears throat> As we did in the past, we will try to sit at least five minutes, of course, not in one go, but uh, collectively. Although sitting is what is now traditionally um, accepted as a so-called meditation, I'll need to stress you that sitting is nothing special. What is special is the uh, being uh, in the moment of awareness. That's more special. Um, I've been telling some of my friends recently Mm, one could almost say that Buddhism can be summarized or essentialized in two words. That is, and they are aware and awake. To be awakened is what we want. That's what actually Buddha, you know, the part of the word, part of the meaning of the Buddha word Buddha means awake. Awake to the truth. And in order to achieve that, the path is uh, habituating oneself with being aware. <clears throat> Almost everything can be distilled to this two. If you have this two, then I think you have a life in full. You know, value is what drives us. People, some people value diamond and we get driven by diamond. Um, other people see value in the state of being aware and awakened. <clears throat> Some people think that's the most valuable. Today we are sort of doing the dhyana with a framework of uh, this idea of freedom. But uh, you know, the word freedom is just so vague and so, and the freedom itself is so subjective. Many times, <clears throat> People spend whole life struggling to get a freedom. Isn't that ironic? It's 
So what I'm saying is basically freedom can be very freedom can be very chaining, binding. I was just having some some conversation with some of my British friends. Talked about half an hour about how social media is actually destroying the people, especially the youth. It's the social media such as TikTok that's causing bulimia, anorexia, depression, even suicide. But then, just like suddenly, the same British people talk about how you know, poor, the North Koreans don't have this social media freedom. Can you see the paradoxy of us human beings? Sorry, I had to tease some of my British friends. It just came out, sorry. You know, the idea of nirvana in Buddhism is very loosely associated with freedom, liberation. You know the word liberation, may I liberate all sentient beings? It's, it's used, you know, the word liberation is used to describe nirvana. I have a little doubt about that, but that's another time we can discuss. Shanda Diva said, um, you know, Jawang Tamji Dunghal, Rawang Tamji Dewa, you know, Shanda Diva said, when you are dependent on someone or something, then you have a dukkha, you have a pain. When you are free from being dependent on someone or something, or the, yeah, then, then you have, yeah, I guess. So what I'm trying to tell you is the definition of the freedom from the Buddhist point of view is what I've just explained. <clears throat> so in this context, freedom such as freedom of speech, freedom of voting, freedom of, I don't know, congregation, they are kindergarten freedom. Real freedom comes when you have no more obligations. When you are not, you are not bound by duty. You are no more bound by morality when you don't when you are no more obliged to be um, Robin Hood, then you are actually free. Otherwise, until then <clears throat> you're not really free, you know. And 2,500 years history of Buddhism, there is a systematic training to reach this freedom. And, um, and not just like one, one sole method, so many, many, many methods. And here in Dhyana, we are just choosing one such method okay so what i want you to do is whatever you are thinking right now you must be thinking something unless you have become a you know like a stone you have to think something just be aware of that. Let's say you feel you're not thinking of anything. Even that's a thought. Just be aware of that. I'm just, for instance, I give you an example. I was just thinking about the tennis ball. So, 
the practice here is just be aware of that. Whatever the thought comes, just be aware. I don't care, I mean, by all means, if you want to sit, because that's the habit, right? Then please do. It doesn't matter, even if you are lying down or standing or walking around as you are listening to this, just for, let's say, 10 sec uh, 20 seconds, something like that, 30 seconds, let's just be aware of whatever the thoughts. And then, of course, your thoughts will also change. I mean, it's not always on tennis ball, right? Mm. It can change too. Yeah, so whatever you are thinking, next thought, just be aware. Some of you may be thinking, why is his screen moving and driving us like dizzy? I'm just, I forgot to look for a table and the time, you know, like there was just about a half a minute and I couldn't do it. Okay, so let's do it now. Okay, that's good. You may think, that's it? You may think, then what? See, when the moment you ask, then what? You want to go to prison. No, then what? If there's some bad thought, no, like no guilt, no condemnation, nothing. If there is like <clears throat> good thoughts, not to be too excited about. Okay, so let's do it again. Okay, stop. There's still three minutes and 35 seconds to go. See, <clears throat> um, You know, Buddhists don't believe in um, Satan. There's no like evil force out there. And if you are forcing me to come up with a Satan of Buddhism, then I will say it's the habit. And in this case, the habit of needing to solve, fix.
you know, things like, then what? What do I do then? Don't I need to do something about it? You know, like, there's a habit of waging war. We, we have the habit of, yes, I guess you can call it a fixing, sorting, I guess, patching up. Well, on the other hand, there's also the habit of, you know, shoulder path, good. Good job. There's such an <clears throat> important thing to say, isn't it? Good job, well done. I was in Bali doing a yoga and the yoga instructors said, good job, Om. good job. Almost the same amount. Yes, good job, you know, this kind of words creates narcissism. Today you want to hear good job once, tomorrow you will want to hear 100. So here, nothing like good job or bad job, I didn't do well, nothing, just aware. Okay, let's be aware of something not internal. You know, we were talking about mind. Let's be aware of something external. Like, <clears throat> as I watch, as I look at my front, I see my speaker. And then I see these walls and stuff like this. And then the noise. smell, whatever. Let's do that. I mean, let's just be aware. Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's stop. Let's do external and internal together, so to speak. Maybe I should not say internal. It's like sensation that is caused by what's happening outside. I don't know, somebody's chopping something upstairs in my case. cooking or something. <clears throat> it hasn't gotten into my nerve yet. You know, sensations, feelings, I don't know. Something that your friend said this morning, maybe still hovering on your head and making you angry or depressed or, I don't know, romantic or whatever. Preferably, something that's happening now. Let's do it.
Okay, let's stop. One more minute to go. All together, we are doing five minutes of aware. And I'm telling you, my dear ones, that moment, just simply aware. If you just can bank onto this, if you can just do this, you'll be free. Actually, you can already tell that moment, short it may be, you're already free. This is, you know, empirical. This is experienceable. I'm not telling you a story. And this is what Dhyan means. Okay, let's do rest of the time. Okay, one minute. Okay, one minute's up. So that's all together, five minutes. I watched Blade Runner, part it one and two. Such a good film, I'm telling you, you should watch. It's really powerful, actually, kind of depressing also. I was thinking, you know, it is possible that I'm a replicant. But you know, even if I'm a replicant, replicant, as long as I know the value or Yes, as long as I know the value or as long as I have the ability to do what we just did. I don't mind to be being replicant. It's okay. I'm, I'm very happy to be an espresso machine. I don't know whether the espresso machine knows to be aware itself. I 
I guess we can program it that way, right? So maybe I, a replicant, is trying to program you, replicants, to be aware of yourself. Okay, I know 2022 has been what the Chinese say, may you live in the interesting time. It has been interesting time. I don't know what to wish for you for this coming new year. Except I wish that you will manage to be aware. And the rest. May you all have a much more distant expiry date. And may you, may some of your wish be fulfilled. I would, I, I would not, I mean, my prayer doesn't really work. And even if it does work, I, I don't think I should wish that all your wish will come true. That's, that's scary. Tomorrow, I'm going to do prayers to all the Dakinis. For those who understand Tantra, I am doing a prayer to Dakinis. Please, those who have time and means, buy a flower or a burn an incense as a gift. Gift for all these Dakinis. And please tell them, to protect us, protect us from being drifted to anything that is not freedom. Okay, take care. <laughs> Thank you, Rinpoche.